In the last episode, we met some new people in the town of Diamond City, specifically inside of the dugout bar. After saving Vadim, I went to the rich part of town and I went into another bar to see what was happening. As I went inside of the bar, I saw two men in an argument. Paul thought his wife was cheating on him with the bartender and called the bartender out. They ended up fighting and Paul got kicked out of the bar. Take it easy. I don't think she wants to leave just hey, yet. Hey, this is between me and my wife. Why don't you mind your own damn business for once? Oh, God, Paul, why do you always have to make a scene? Pour me another drink, Hank. Damn it. Darcy, I just want you to come home. I'll be home. Later. I can't believe you'd do this to me, Cook. Do what to you, Paul? You smug bastard. You keep away from my wife, God you damn it. You better get out of here before you do something stupid. You son of a bitch. Don't hurt him, yeah. Andy. Yeah. Go on. Get out of here. I'll be at home, Darcy. Taking care of our son. Later on during the day, I was at the shop selling and buying things from my home when Paul approached me and said he wanted to confront Cook, the bartender. So I agreed to help him out. When we approached Cook, he said nothing had happened between him and Paul's wife. Then, he said to make it even, he has a job they can do for a lot of money. He said after the job is finished, he'll leave town and never come Hello. back. You there. I am. Um, I have a question for you. What do you want? You were in the tap house before and... You tried to punch out the bartender. What was that all about? I thought it was dead obvious. Cook is sleeping with my wife and I'm supposed to just pretend I don't know. Until Cook decides he's bored with her and she comes crawling back home to me. So, where do I come in? I'm going to go back and talk to him, and I want you to come with me. You saw? You won't take me seriously otherwise. I don't want to have to really hurt him, I just want him to leave Darcy alone. You're going to have to make it worth my while. Uh, well, okay. I can only pay you 80 caps right now, but I'll scrape together more after we take care of Cook. Let's go. You do the talking, I'll be the intimidating prince. All right. Come on. All right, bro. I don't even need to take money from him, bro. I feel bad. Hey, Paul. Come on. I want to get this over with. The wall's looking as green as the day she was built. Forgot I can just skip these missions by just getting into these things without skipping. Them. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there. I just have to close up. We need to talk. Jesus, Paul. What now? It's time for you to shut up and listen. Cook. What the hell is this? And what are you doing here? Don't tell me he's hired you to... Look, wait, let me look at my weapons real quick, dog. I'll roll my switchblade. What difference does it make? I just like to know who to shoot at when the guns come out. Well, I'm listening, Paul. What do you have to say this time? Just this. You leave Darcy alone, starting now, or now else. that is a very bad idea. You don't want to pull a gun on me unless you intend to use it. You think I won't it. use it? Huh? Do I just need to kill you? Is that what you're saying? Chance, calm down, don't shoot. Fuck. Give Cook a chance. Calm down. Uh... Put the guns away before this gets out of hand. Wait. I can make this right, Paul. Keep talking. Look, I, uh... I'll stay away from Darcy from now on. It's over. Your you word? have my word on What's that. your fucking word worth, I'll huh? make it up to you. I know a way to get a lot of money right now. You and I both know the only reason Darcy comes up here is she's pissed at you. If you were flush again... Everything would be different. Besides, I owe you for well, what I've done. What do you think? Sounds like a win-win to me. Damn right it is. Here's the deal. I have some other um, businesses on the side. One of them is helping Nelson Latimer spend his dad's money to make himself feel like a gangster. 
who's Nelson Latimer? Malcolm's kid. An arrogant little pissant. But useful, since he has all the money in the world and likes to think of himself as a budding crime boss. Me and Nelson are supposed to be meeting some gentleman from Good Neighbor to exchange Nelson's cash. My for their plan chems. is simple. We take the money and the chems. I don't know. An awful lot of unknowns. Trust me, we can do this, no problem. The meeting's always in the same place. They always bring the same number They'll of guys. They'll never know what hit them. Hold on. I have some questions first. Yeah? What is it? What about afterwards? Won't everyone be after Come us? Come on. You know the answer. No witnesses. Anything else? Why do you want to screw these guys over all of a sudden? Oh, it isn't all of a sudden. Nelson's been complaining about my cut for a while now. He may be thinking about trying to strike out I've on been waiting own. for the right opportunity to present itself. And here it is. Anything else? Why smuggle chems into Diamond City? Chems aren't sure, illegal here. But Mayor McDonough takes a big cut of all the chems brought into town. Not everybody thinks that's good That's business. where me and Nelson come in. He fronts the cash, I make the arrangements. Cheap chems for Diamond City. Everybody Anything wins. else? That's it. Okay, so you're in then? I guess it's worth the risk. Let's what do, do this. What do you say, Paul? Are we good? Good? Hardly. But I don't mind you helping me get rich. Just a bitch. I would like this one. Hmm. You then go down to the river and ambush a huge drug deal containing a lot of jet and other drugs worth a lot of caps. Here we are. Just the meat, it's just ahead. But there's always four of Morowski's goons. Trish who's in charge, and then three other guys to unload the boat and wave their guns You around. should be able to work your way around these buildings to get a good angle on them. I'll wait for the shooting to start, then join in from here. Remember, we can't afford to let anybody get away. What about Nelson? I'll deal with Nelson. You worry about Morowski's crew. Now, are we all set? As good a plan as any. So I need to kill these guys. Um, the best way I can think of. Come on, man. I'm starting to get serious. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I'm out of slipping. I think you have more immediate problems. Wait, I can help you. This here, this is nothing compared to what's at Morowski's can land. What's at this chem lab? More chems than you can imagine. Morowski's entire stash. But you'll never find it without my help. Tell me what you know first. Well, okay. 
I'm trusting you, right? The lab is in the old four-leaf fish packing plant on the waterfront in South Boston. What's so secure about that? The place is overrun with feral ghouls, which don't even look twice at my crew, because they're all ghouls like me. My idea, by the way. Why wouldn't the feral ghouls bother you and your crew? What? You don't know? Ferals don't bother us normal ghouls. I don't know why. Maybe we taste bad. But they're just for cover anyway. The real security is a system of tripwires that have to be triggered in exactly the right order to open the door. You the never even know the lab was there when the door is closed. So how do I get in without hitting all the tripwires? With a password, which I... There's a terminal that will bypass the tripwires and open the door to the lab. I have your promise, right? If I give you the password, you let me walk? And you promised to not tell Murawski that I had anything to do with yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, of course. I already told you. After I leave here, I've never heard of you in my password. Is Applejack. There. Now you've got everything. And I'm completely screwed forever. I hope you can live with that. Sorry. So that's that. I told you it was no problem. The money should still be on Nelson's body. And then there's these chems, which you'll need to sell somehow. But that's your problem now. I'm leaving town for good. Should make things easier for Paul to have me gone. Plus, there's no plausible way I could explain to Morowski how I wasn't involved in this unless I die here along with everyone else. Just like that? You're leaving town and never coming back? Yeah. You won't be able to blame me for all your problems anymore. What are you going to do now? Uh, I think I'll just keep that to myself. But don't worry, I've been planning this move for a while. I'll be So, fine. it's just the two of us. 50-50 seems fair to me. That works for me. Great. Then you take the money from Nelson, I'll take the chems, and we'll call it even. Aren't the chems worth more than the money? Sure. If you owned a chems shop right here, but I'll have to pay the mayor his cut, plus move all... When back in this city, the dad of one of the dealers you killed talks to you to see if you know who killed his son. You there. We need to talk. Is there a problem? The problem is that I've learned that you killed my son Nelson. Is this true? I didn't kill Nelson. Whoever told you that was lying. Uh, you are an easy target for anyone trying to shift blame off themselves, it wasn't you? Who was it? Do you know who killed Nelson? Paul Prembrook or Mara? I want to know who told you it was me. I heard it from Morosky. Low-life Kim Pusher from Good Neighbor. Maybe he has some reason to bring trouble down. So, do you know anything about who killed Nelson? Wait, Paul Pembroke, that's the guy. I have no idea. Well, all right. I'll take your word for it. For now. But if I hear that you were the one lying to me. In the next episode, we help people defend Cambridge Police Station. Also, we try finding a scientist that left the institution that lives in the glowing sea. The other way, my friend.